Creatine is thought to be a muscle building supplement for bodybuilders. However, a lot of scientists and doctors are now considering creatine to be a longevity supplement. Creatine increases the availability of phosphocreatine in the muscles, which increases energy levels. This can have a broad benefit on many aspects of health. In this video, I'm going to talk about why there's so much excitement about creatine as a longevity supplement. And I'm going to cover the correct dose used in these studies. And I think you're going to be pretty surprised. I'll also cover the controversies about creatine's effects on kidneys, hair loss, and water retention. Everyone pretty much knows that creatine has benefits on muscle strength and muscle performance. We'll get to that in a moment, but I want to start with the benefits of creatine on the brain. Because the brain uses a lot of energy, creatine is important for cognition and preventing neurodegeneration. The brain has quite a lot of creatine, although not as much as skeletal muscle, because the brain consumes 20% of your daily energy demands. Many neurodegenerative conditions, such as Huntington's or Alzheimer's, are characterized by low brain creatine levels. There are currently no clinical trials looking at creatine's effects on Alzheimer's disease yet, but it shows potential in maintaining brain bioenergetic flux, which is impaired in Alzheimer's disease. However, there's already quite a lot of evidence about the benefits of creatine on memory and cognition. A 2022 meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials found that creatine supplementation improved memory in healthy individuals. The dosage used was 2 to 20 grams per day. There's also some evidence that creatine might help with depression or traumatic brain injury. Another interesting thing is that thanks to its effects on the brain, creatine can reduce sleep demand and counteract sleep deprivation. In one study, a single dose of creatine monohydrate at a dose of 350 milligrams per kilogram during 21 hours of sleep deprivation improved processing speed and cognition. For a person weighing 70 kilograms, that would be 25 grams of creatine. Supplementing 5 grams of creatine 4 times a day for 7 days before an experiment involving 36 hours of sleep deprivation has been shown to improve cognitive and psychomotor performance compared to placebo. In elite rugby athletes, taking 100 milligrams per kilogram of creatine counteracts the harmful effects of sleep deprivation on skill performance. For a person weighing 80 kilograms, that would be the equivalent of 8 grams of creatine. Or for the rugby athletes who probably weigh around 100 kilograms, it would be 10 grams of creatine. So there is evidence that creatine has benefits on cognitive function and memory performance, especially for the elderly who suffer from low levels of creatine and from some aspects of cognitive decline. The effective dose for that appears to be at least 2 grams of creatine, and in a lot of the studies, the actually use much larger doses, up to 20 grams of creatine, divided into 5 gram doses 4 times a day. And for sleep deprivation, the doses are also quite large, at least 7 to 8, even 10 grams of creatine a day. Next, let's move on with muscle. By now, there are hundreds, if not thousands of studies on creatine, indicating that it supports maximal strength, power, near maximum intensity exercise, lean body mass, and even reduces the incidence of injuries during training. Creatine decreases levels of a protein called a myostatin that inhibits muscle growth. Myostatin is turned on most of the time to prevent our bodies from excessively growing. I'm sure you've seen these cows and dogs who have myostatin deficiency and they're just like crazy jacked and they look like bodybuilders. That's because they have low myostatin levels. Resistance training lowers myostatin, but combining it with creatine appears to decrease myostatin levels even more. So that's why you see a lot of studies finding that combining resistance training with creatine provides greater results in terms of muscle growth and muscle strength development than just doing resistance training alone. A 2023 meta-analysis of creatine supplementation combined with resistance training showed it improves muscle hypertrophy more than doing resistance training without creatine. The dosages used in these studies are again 100 milligrams per kilogram per day, which for a person who weighs 80 kilograms is going to be the equivalent of 8 grams of creatine. If a person weighs 50 kilograms, then it's 5 grams of creatine. If they weigh 100 kilograms, then that's 10 grams of creatine per day. Some of the studies also use the divided dose so they have 8 grams of creatine 3 times a day. In the meta-analysis I just mentioned, the effects were significant in both older and younger individuals, and both in longer and shorter durations of supplementation. However, the results were greater in younger people than in older people. The effects were also more significant in short-term supplementation compared to long-term. It's interesting to see that younger people gain more benefits from creatine supplementation and it probably has to do with the fact that elderly people suffer from some aspects of anabolic resistance that makes it harder for them to build muscle. So they have a lower threshold or a ceiling to get the benefits. But it also means that the elderly people are prime targets for creatine supplementation because it's harder for them to build muscle and they would want to you know, use all the tools that make it easier for them. And the elderly people are the ones who would benefit from the other benefits of creatine as well the most. So in my opinion, creatine is the best supplement for the elderly people. 
A 2017 meta-analysis on the elderly people found that creatine combined with resistance training resulted in about 1.4 kilograms more lean muscle mass compared to resistance training without creatine. Their muscle strength also increased more when taking creatine. A 2021 meta-analysis on older people found that, quote, Creatine loading phase over 20 grams a day for 5 to 7 days is important for older adults wanting to improve muscle strength. In addition to a creatine loading phase, a lower daily dosage of creatine less than 5 grams appears to be sufficient to improve upper body strength. However, a higher daily dosage of over 5 grams after the loading phase is needed to increase lower body strength. So for the elderly people, it appears that the loading phase provides greater benefits and the elderly people benefit from a larger dose of at least over 5 grams of creatine per day. So overall, there is evidence that creatine supports muscle strength and muscle mass in both younger and elderly people. The effects are greater in younger individuals, but the elderly people are the ones who would benefit most from creatine. The dosage is also kind of interesting that is similar to the brain studies. Most of these studies use a dose over 5 grams of creatine a day, and some of them use up to 20 grams of creatine per day. And this is interesting because most people online would say that 2 to 3 grams of creatine is enough. But based on the studies, then the optimal dose is definitely over 5 grams of creatine and ideally 100 milligrams per kilogram of body weight. Regarding bone density and creatine supplementation, then there is some conflicting findings. In a 2020 randomized controlled trial, supplementing 3 grams of creatine per day for 2 years didn't promote bone density nor muscle mass or function in postmenopausal women. This might be because women weren't told to do resistance training, which is the most important thing for enhancing bone density. That's why drinking more milk or eating protein alone isn't going to increase your bone density. If you're not doing weight-bearing exercise, then you're not going to increase your bone density. The weight is the single most important determining factor for increasing bone density. And things like creatine, vitamin D, protein intake, calcium, they're just going to enhance that response. But just taking these supplements alone isn't going to work. A 2022 meta-analysis of clinical trials on creatine supplementation combined with resistance training and bone density found that a dose of 5 grams a day wasn't enough to increase bone density in 4 studies. In 5 studies out of 6, a higher dose of 100 milligrams per kilogram or 7 to 9 grams a day was enough to improve at least one marker of bone health. And again, it looks like a much higher dose of creatine is needed, 100 milligrams per kilogram. So for most people, it's going to be something like 7 to 9 grams of creatine per day. That's two to three times more than is usually recommended, the three gram dose. It doesn't mean that the dose of two to three grams doesn't work, but the evidence that I've outlined in these meta-analyses, which includes dozens of studies, indicates that the optimal dose is 100 milligrams per kilogram. I hope by now you've seen that creatine is quite amazing and very effective. But there's one downside to creatine that many people aren't aware of, and that's a decrease in your VO2 max. A 2021 meta-analysis of 19 randomized controlled trials found that creatine supplementation reduced VO2 max regardless of the type of training or population. The initial hypothesis might be that you build more muscle and you're heavier, which is why you have a lower VO2 max. But the authors of the study did control for body mass. The second reason could be because creatine favors anaerobic performance, which is the fast twitch explosive exercise, and this might result in lower VO2 max. Regardless, the drop in VO2 max isn't that significant. But if you're trying to maximize your VO2 max in the short term, then it might be better to not take large amounts of creatine. The other benefits that you get from creatine, such as the increased muscle mass, muscle strength, and brain function, make it somewhat worth it, even though you see a small decline in VO2 max. Creatine isn't going to favor endurance performance either. A 2023 meta-analysis found that creatine supplementation was ineffective for increasing endurance performance in trained individuals. They even saw a trivial negative effect on performance. So it looks like creatine has a net negative effect on endurance performance. How relevant it is for you depends on your goals and other fitness markers. A higher vo 2 max and cardiovascular fitness is linked to a lower risk of chronic diseases and longevity, even more so than muscle mass and strength. However, for the aging population, the other benefits of creatine are going to make it worthwhile. Let's quickly talk about kidney dysfunction because it's often thought that creatine is going to mess up your kidneys. To sum it up, creatine doesn't cause kidney damage to otherwise healthy people. But people who have already existing kidney dysfunction, they might want to avoid creatine. A 2019 meta-analysis of 15 studies found that creatine supplementation didn't affect creatinine or urea levels. In another 2020 randomized controlled trial, taking 3 to 5 grams of creatine per day didn't impair kidney function in healthy young adults. Taking large doses of creatine, 20 grams a day for 5 days, followed by 5 grams a day for 12 weeks, hasn't been seen to affect kidney function in people already eating a high-protein diet. 
A 2021 study on U.S. adults also found no association between dietary creatine intake and kidney dysfunction. Overall, creatine supplementation is safe. According to the International Society of Sports Nutrition, studies show that short- and long-term supplementation of creatine, up to 30 grams a day for 5 years, is safe and well-tolerated in healthy individuals and in a number of patient populations ranging from infants to the elderly. Moreover, significant health benefits may be provided by ensuring habitual low dietary creatine ingestion 3 grams a day throughout the lifespan. So creatine isn't going to harm your kidneys at a moderate dose, and even a high dose of up to 20 to 30 grams a day doesn't appear to cause any issues. I also found a case study of a 20-year-old guy with a single kidney who loaded with 20 grams of creatine per day for 5 days and then took 5 grams per day for a total of 35 days. He already had decreased EGFR levels indicating impaired kidney function and he was eating a high-protein diet, but he still didn't see any negative effects on his kidney function. If you have only a single kidney and you're taking creatine, it doesn't appear to cause any issues even then. Another common misconception about creatine is that it's going to make you lose hair. That conclusion has been drawn from a single study where creatine supplementation increased DHT levels, which is what promotes hair loss. In that study, there were rugby players who supplemented 25 grams of creatine a day for 7 days and then continued with 5 grams per day for 14 days. Their DHT levels increased by 56% after 7 days and stayed 40% above baseline until the end of 14 days. Yes, DHT is made from testosterone and it's implicated in hair loss, but this study was never replicated and they didn't find any specific actions on hair loss. There are other studies that find that creatine doesn't increase testosterone or free testosterone, which means that it's not going to increase DHT either. A 2021 review on women's health also concluded that creatine has benefits for women, especially postmenopausal women and when using higher doses of 300 mg per kilogram per day. However, the critical component here is resistance training again. Creatine is more effective if you combine it with weight-bearing exercise and resistance training. Just taking creatine alone doesn't have that much benefits. Another concern with creatine is that it's going to make you gain weight, especially cause water retention. Well, yes, creatine increases water retention in the muscles which makes the muscles look fuller and bigger. However, creatine can actually make you lose fat. A meta-analysis on men over the age of 50 found that supplementing with creatine when combined with resistance training made them lose half a kilo of fat mass more than those who did just resistance training. The dosages were also about 100 milligrams per kilogram or 20 grams loaded for 5 to 7 days, followed by 5 grams per day. So creatine can actually make you lose fat, mostly because it increases your lean muscle mass and that water retention mostly occurs in the muscles. In conclusion, creatine is one of the most evidence-based supplements out there, definitely for muscle growth, muscle strength, and speed performance. The evidence for endurance is slightly negative, but creatine still has longevity benefits for the brain and cognition. The caveat here, as I outlined in the video, is that the optimal dose is 100 milligrams per kilogram per day, which for most people is gonna be somewhere between five to seven or eight to 10 grams per day. Most people would recommend that a dose of two to three grams is enough, which might be true, but the optimal dose appears to be much higher than that. A lot of people might say that they'll just get the creatine from their food, which is possible with certain foods, but it's actually quite difficult. And what's more, as I've outlined in this video, the optimal dose of creatine is actually much higher, 5 to 10 grams instead of 2 to 3 grams, as many people say. Yes, you could get 2 to 3 grams of creatine by eating 2 pounds of steak or 4 pounds of ground beef, but how realistic is it for most people? To get the optimal dose of 10 grams for men, you would have to eat 3 times more than that, so 6 pounds of steak or 12 pounds of ground beef. That's 5 kilograms of ground beef. Herring is actually the highest food source of creatine, much higher than beef. You get 2 to 3 grams of creatine from just 1 pound of herring, so 450 grams. But to get the 10 gram dose, you need 1.2 kilograms or 3 pounds of herring. So it's pretty unfeasible to get all of your creatine from whole foods because the optimal dose is much larger than most people think. You could maybe cover one third or half of that with whole foods, but you're still missing out on some of the potential gains if you're maximizing muscle strength and physical performance. And if you're eating a diet that is low in muscle meat and low in fish like herring, then you definitely would benefit from a larger dose of creatine supplementation because you're not getting it from your whole food. In terms of the types of creatine, then most of these studies are done on the regular creatine monohydrate which is also the cheapest form of creatine. You don't need to spend a lot of money on some expensive form of creatine because the research suggests creatine monohydrate is the best. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. If you want to pre-order my new book, The Longevity Leap, then check out the link in the description. Thanks for watching. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.